This is a very easy and straightforward beginner's income watercolour using just two colours and the pen. And we'll go through this step by step so that you know exactly what I'm doing at every stage. The pen that I'm using is a size 0.2 and it's a uni pin fine liner and it's black. The pad that I'm using is an A4 and it's 250 grams in weight and it's a, um, a Faber Castell one also. It's a mixed media pad but I do use it an awful lot for watercolours and I've used it in a lot of other YouTube videos because it's a lovely smooth paper which works well with the very small nib that I'm using here to draw. The inspiration for this idea came for some, from some photographs that my son sent me whilst he was on holiday. He actually missed the bus home and had to walk home at midnight so it was in the dark and he was experimenting with various filters on his phone and that ended up with a very very blue sky with the stars showing and perhaps a little bit of snow as well. But uh, so we're kind of imagining there's some stars and there's some snow and I'm going to use some salt to create this. So if you keep uh, watching till the end of the video, you'll see me put the salt in the sky to create those effects of the stars. And you don't need anything special for this. It's just ordinary table salt that we all have. You don't actually need a photograph for this to copy. You could just do it out of your head. I've got a very basic shape of a little hut there um, and a mountain that we could really do from the imagination. If you don't want to do that, go on to the internet and find some photographs um, and you could do a compilation. You don't have to do it all from one and just keep it into a nice narrow line in the centre of your paper, leaving lots of nice white paper around. Try not to get too hung up on doing lots of detail. Keep it very simple. You'll see that the shed and the tree are a very simple shape, as is the mountain. Um, if you do too much detail, you're going to bring the picture forward. You want to make it look as if it's off in the distance. So keep that detail to a minimum. Just some little triangle shapes. Um, wiggle your nib of your pen around to get quite abstract impressionistic shapes for some tree lines on the mountain itself and keep it very very simple okay once you finish your drawing do let it uh, just dry for a few moments it will be a waterproof pen and it's fade proof but you do want it just to rest for a few moments and let it dry before you go on to put in the watercolors on when it comes to mixing your watercolor make sure that you've got two pots of clean water one for cleaning your brush and one for putting the water into the palette and onto the paper which is nice clean fresh water once you're happy with your drawing, pop that to one side while you come and mix your colours. The colours that I'm using are Phalo Turquoise and Payne's Grey. You don't have to use these, you could use whatever you like. You could mix a black with a blue, have a look at the different blues that you've got on your palette and have a bit of an experiment which ones you would like to use. But make it nice and thick, don't use too much water. Um, plenty of pigment in there to make it a nice rich dark blue. So you could, you know, you could mix, like I say, black and blue. You could mix two different blues together, whatever you like. Have a bit of a play with this idea. Before you apply the paint, you want to apply some very clean water and just apply it around the picture, not over the mountain and things. So turn your paper upside down and I have propped the bottom half of the paper under a little tin of paints just so that the water is flowing forwards towards my hand there into the sky. Keeping that paper on a slant, you can then add your colour, just dropping it in. Um, I've, you'll see now I've got quite a small brush. This brush is a size six, it's a sable brush. And that means because it's such a small one, I can get into all those little nooks and crannies of the drawing around the mountain there. So don't go over any of your paper to the bottom side of the mountain and the trees, but you can go over that tree. Um, you'll see by the hut, I'm going straight over that tree because that's not actually got any white in it at all. So pop your paint in and allow it to flow into the water that's already there. So it's important that you don't let that water dry before you apply your paint. Just leave it to flow in. Don't move it at all on your own. You know, don't, don't, speed up the drying process in any way don't use a hair dryer leave it um, to dry but we're going to put the salt in before we do that so you the salt will only work if the paint is still damp so do bear with me and we'll put the salt in next as this is starting to dry 
carefully sprinkle the salt on just a few little grains at a time I perhaps overdid it a little bit um, you could do two or three of these images if you wanted to have a go at different amounts of salt and actually different types of salt as well but the important thing is that you leave it to dry you may need to leave it for quite a while and then carefully remove it with clean fingers and a clean brush but don't try and remove it when it is still wet you will make a heck of a mess so perhaps leave it overnight it doesn't matter how long you leave it it's better to leave it for a long time and have it completely dry okay so you can see we've got quite a pleasing picture there with just using the one pen two colors and the salt you could expand on this if you wanted to but it's really nice just to keep it simple if you can I hope you enjoy having a go at that like I say go and get some pictures off the internet and have a play with different mountain shapes and different trees and I will link down below in the description the pad and the pen that I've used just so that you can see um, what equipment I'm using but like I say it's a lovely pad that mixed media pad that you can use for all sorts of things you'll see I do add just a few extra lines on at the end and this is the good thing with ink and watercolour you can carry on working if you feel you need to add extra drawing on after you've done your painting Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Any questions, please do put those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, enjoy your painting and drawing. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.